Okay, welcome to stage four of the Postman Pat 3D game tutorial. Uh, this is the most fun stage. Um, the point that we're aiming for is to try and make your Postman Pat um, car drive around. So by the end, you'll be able to um, to use it in the game engine and use the arrow keys to be able to uh, to drive it all around. Okay, so at the end of the last tutorial, we've just got the textures in place on. Um, on Postman Pat, we want to change this time to the game logic view. So, um, Blender is quite a clever way, um, but quite a weird way of doing game logic. So, logic's kind of the rules that make the game work. Um, you have sensors, controllers, and actuators. Actuators actually change the um, the 3D world. Controllers. Um, well, we'll come back to controllers. Sensors detect stuff, so detect when you've pressed a key. And controllers work out what to do with those that sensor information before it sends it on to the actuators to actually make the change happen. Um, we're going to use Python for the controller. You can do it with logic blocks and everything like that, but we we'll want to get started with a little bit of simple Python programming. I'll just copy and paste some Python code. Um, but then at the end of the video I'll go through and explain what that code does so you can skip it if you want to or you can listen to the explanation. Okay, first thing to do is to make sure that you've got uh, your Postman Pat truck and the body part selected because that's the bit that we want to make move to begin with um, and we're going to add a couple of sensors to detect when you um, press certain keys so we're going to right click to select the body of the Postman Pat truck and add a keyboard sensor it's important what you call it, it's case sensitive, um, so um, I'd write in exactly what I write in. I'm calling it key up in camel case, so capital K, capital U, and the thing it's going to detect is when you press the up arrow. So I just clicked on that box there and then pressed the up arrow on the keyboard. I'm then going to hide that um, uh, just to make it smaller, and I'm going to add in a number of other sensors. So I want a couple more key ones, so key down, and that key is key down, and I'm going to minimize it. I want to add key left for the left arrow, and I want to add key right for the right arrow. Um, I also want to add a delay um, that will happen about 60 times every second. Uh, and I want that to happen over and over and over because I don't want this to just move when I press the arrow keys I want it to slow down automatically um, or keep on accelerating when you press the, the arrow keys and that's what the delay one will do ok then we need a controller and we want a python controller um, and for this to work I'm going to open up um, a python thing um, or you can make a new one call it game.py and copy and paste in here. I've got something in the keyboard, um, sorry, in the clipboard, but I'm going to open one up. So if you've downloaded the Python file, then you can do it this way. Otherwise, you'll make a new one, put in the name game.py and start typing the stuff or copying and pasting. So to load it, you go text and open text block find your python file .py for python and this is the one that I'm using so I'll explain this at the end of this tutorial um, but if you just want to copy and paste it then find the file along with this tutorial and work from there okay um, nothing's connected up yet so to test stuff you just put your mouse over the 3d view and press P but nothing works yet when I'm pressing the arrow keys because I haven't connected up the sensors to the controllers and the controllers to the actuators. To do that, use these dots here, um, and you click and drag. If you make a mistake whilst doing this, you can hold down control on your keyboard and knife them through. But you want each dot from a sensor to go to the same controller, and the controller's the Python script. Now, Python's a really good um, language to get started with, it uses indentation an awful lot, which means tabs here. Um, so you don't get curly braces like you do in JavaScript or C or C Sharp or C++ or anything like that. Um, and it's supposed to be as easy to read as possible. 
Um, so it's important that we tell this controller to work with this script. So you click on the little notepad thing, tell it to work with game.py. And then finally, the actuator, the thing that actually makes stuff happen, um, we want to add a motion actuator. So you can see there's all sorts of stuff you can play around with, but for now, we only want action and connect the controller to the motion block. Um, and that should work. Now, when I press P to preview, um, it's, uh, it's not working just yet. Um, that's because we need to set up a variable for this block, um, for this uh, mesh called speed. So on the left-hand side of the screen, let's add a game property. It's called prop at the moment, so I'll click and change it to speed, all in lowercase. Um, I'll try again, see if that works. So at the moment, it's just the body of Postman Pat's truck um, that can drive around, because the game logic at the bottom of the screen only applies to that mesh, that 3D thing. Press escape to get out of the 3D um, game preview thing, and we want to make the wheels belong to the Postman Pat truck body. So I'm going to right click on the wheels, hold down shift to, right, um, to select all of them at once, and then the last thing I want to select is the Postman Pat body, and press Control and P, and that sets the parent. So that means the Postman Pat truck body will be the parent of the wheels. Um, so the wheels will belong to the Postman Pat truck. So now when I test it and press P, it will drive around quite happily. You'll notice we seem to have lost the textures. Um, to make them work, you've got to do a couple of things. So first of all, we're in solid mode, so we'll change that to texture mode. And that'll work in the preview on here, but when you press P to preview it in the game mode, it'll look like it's broken. Um, to fix that, hold your mouse over the 3D preview area and press N. Um, N for nothing. I don't know why the keyboard shortcut is N for this, but it brings up the, um, the properties thing on the right-hand side of the 3D thing. Scroll down until you can see display, click the triangle, and we need to change multi-texture to single texture, which should make it work um, in the 3D view. It looks a bit weird on my screen, um, which is because on the solid view, we've got a red texture, and it's combining that red texture with the UV texture mapping, like the actual pictures for Postman Pat's truck, which is a bit irritating. Um, so to get it to work on mine, um, select just the Postman Pat truck body by right-clicking. Go over to the Materials tab on the right-hand side, and this time we're going to set the diffuse colour back to white. So click in the middle and make it. Um, white. So if we looked on solid view now, the truck would be white, but when we go textured view and press P, it just looks a little bit better on here. Okay, so I haven't showed you in this tutorial how to um, make the, um, the map, uh, or how to make it draw on top of a map, but if you look at the stage 3, the UV texture mapping, it's very similar. You just go into edit mode with the um, uh, with the base plane selected. So you'd select it by right clicking, press tab, go into uh, UV editing, get a different picture, and see if you can apply the, the texture to there. I'll leave that as a bit of a challenge. I won't set that as a video tutorial unless people request it. Um, but the last stage that I said I'd do was to describe and explain the script. So I'll go back to game logic and let's have a look through here. Okay, so the first two lines, zoom in a little bit more, um, first two lines import some libraries into Python. Um, so we've got Blender Game Engine, BGE, that lets you work with all the, the Blender library and the game logic to be able to control the actuators and the controllers and the sensors and all that sort of stuff. Okay, so using that game logic library, we're going to find the current controller. Now that is, um, if I can, yeah, that is all of these. Uh, sorry, that's this controller. So the one that the Python block is currently belonging to, this controller. Uh, I'm going to save that as a variable called controller. 
Um, and then I want to find out all of the sensor values. Um, sorry, not all the sensor values. I want to find out the actuator. So I've got one actuator called motion. So we're finding that actuator here and saving it to a variable called movement. Then we want to find the actual um, 3D object that the controller belongs to. So I've called it pat, a variable called pat, and we're getting the controller owner. So this is where we find out the sensors. So I've already worked out the controller. That's this variable here. And we want to find the sensors um, key up. So that will find this sensor here. So that's why it's important that we call it, um, uh, label it correctly. So that's the name in there. And we're saving that as a variable called key up. Similar for key down, key left, and key right. We're just getting the sensors for those. And the speed here, because we found the 3D object, um, you can use that as a um, as an array, so a kind of uh, to be able to look up the properties of it. And I want to find the speed because the speed will change um, throughout the game, and that's this property just here. So you can add loads of different game properties, um, but we just added one called speed. And then we've got the conditional logic. So we're saying if we're pressing the key up button, um, then the speed I've actually said the speed gets lower because I drew my postman pat van facing the wrong direction. Um, ELIF, which stands for else if, so if I'm pressing the down button, the down arrow, then you make the speed, I've said the speed gets bigger. So minus equals means that you make the speed a little bit smaller, so I've said it gets smaller by 0.1, or plus equals means you make the speed bigger by 0.1. And then the delay sensor, this one down here, so 60 times every second, um, goes down here, it says default 60 per second. Um, if we're not pressing a key up or down, then we want to slow down. So I've said that speed just gets smaller by a factor of 0 0.9. So I don't know if we start off at 100, a speed of 100, if you times 100 by 0 0.9, it's going to get to 90. And if you times 90 by 0 0.9, um, you'll get like um, 9 tenths of 90. And it just kind of gets smaller and smaller and smaller. And then I've got a new variable called steering. And we set it to 0. So unless you press anything, it's just going to move straight on. And I'm saying if you press the left arrow, then I want to... Now notice here, steering is dependent on speed because I don't want to be able to press the left or right arrow um, unless you're moving forwards or backwards. So I'll start with this one because it's easier. If you're pressing the right arrow, um, the steering is speed over 10, so one tenth of the speed. Um, and this zero minus speed over 10 just makes that negative. So um, if speed is 10 here, steering will be 1, here steering will be minus 1. Then um, we want to work out um, how the postman pat van is going to move. So I've already found a variable called movement and that's the motion actuator, so this thing down here. And we've got the location and the rotation, so the x, y and z location. So um, x, y, and z, x, y, and z, or the x, y, z rotation. So you can rotate around um, each axis. Now we're only interested in rotating around the z axis. So I'll show you if I press R to rotate, and then z, that's the rotation that we're worried about. Um, and we're interested in movement on the y axis. So if I press G and then Y, I can move it in the y axis, the green arrow. So here I'm setting the location, and I've got an array here for location. The first will be x, the second will be y, and the third will be z. So we only want to set the y um, uh, aspect of the location, and we set that to speed. So it moves forward by how fast it's going. So if it's going fast, it will move forward a lot. If it's going slow, it will move forward just a little bit. And then similar for rotation. So we're saying this actuator, we set the rotation. We don't worry about the X and Y rotation, we only worry about the Z rotation. 
and we set that to steering. So if steering's positive, we move round a little bit in one way. If it's negative, we move round the other way. Okay, and then this last two lines, um, we need to activate this actuator. It just applies those changes so that it will actually do the movement and the rotation. And then finally, we store the speed so that we're able to slow down or speed up the next time we run this code. So this code will run 60 times a second as a minimum um, or whenever any of these sensors trigger. So whenever you press key up, key down, key left or right um, and 60 times a second. Okay. So the end result is you can move up, you can move down and if you let go of up it will slow down um, or you can't, I'm pressing left and right at the moment, you can't um, change direction unless you're moving at the same time.